Welcome, um, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's great to have everyone here. This is our second session of the ATP Ride Report webinar series. Uh, for those of you that weren't able to join us last week, my name is Ashley Fallon. I handle um, uh, tuition reimbursement and alumni services for ATP Flight School. And our guest today is Rebecca Crone. She's the president and the founder of Corporate and Career Takeoff. Um, she has extensive experience in pilot staffing, and she's going to be able to provide um, information on how to write an effective pilot resume. Um, and just looking through our attendee list, looks like there are a lot of you that are students uh, or alumni of ATP. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're, we're so happy that you're here. And um, just some housekeeping before we get started. You guys are going to be on mute for the duration of this session. Uh, there is that chat box in the lower right, which it looks like a lot of you have already uh, found. And feel free to chat with us on there. And then if you have questions, there's also a Q&A area. Um, please type your designated questions for Rebecca in that area. And then um, again, just our poll results, it did look like a lot of you are, are just starting out. So this is a great opportunity for you to find out more information uh, early on on what different stages of pilot career resumes uh, will look like. So um, now without further ado, I'd like to welcome Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, glad to be here. I think that resumes are important. And so um, I'm happy to talk to you guys about it. Uh, hope you guys get going in the right direction. Awesome, thank you. Well, to start, um, I obviously uh, some of us know your background, but you have extensive experience in the aviation industry. So if you could just share with us a little bit more about um, your background. Yeah, I'm really lucky to have had the opportunities that I've had. I've been in pilot hiring specifically, which is really my one of my biggest passions. Um, I've been in pilot hiring for well, over 20 years now, um, I've worked at two separate major airlines and led the pilot hiring teams um, uh, at one of those airlines, and uh, as well as well as other work groups. I started a consulting company called Corporate Takeoff, and we advise airlines on pretty much all aspects of pilot hiring, as well as some other work groups. Um, and then we started about uh, around. 2014, we started a division of our company called Career Takeoff, and that's really why I'm here is with Career Takeoff, um, where we provide career coaching for pilots, um, hoping to advance their airline pilot career. Um, we provide um, application and resume editing services, interview prep, and um, all uh, test prep required to be hired at a major airline. And so that division of our company is the career takeoff side of the business. Perfect. And with that, you do review probably hundreds of resumes every week um, with this session being geared toward writing an effective resume. What are some of the most common errors that you see? Yeah, when you see um, hundreds of resumes at a time, uh, you have a different aspect of uh, the way that you read them and that's what I hope that you guys start to see your own applications and resumes from that perspective. You know, it's different when you're looking at your own application, you kind of can't see the forest for the trees sometimes, or you're looking at your buddy's resume or application. But when you see it in volume and you're selecting, you know, you're looking at 600 resumes in a day, um, trying to narrow that down to 300 resumes to interview for next month, that's a different perspective. Um, you know, you're only spending about 60 seconds on each resume. Um, so the format is really important. Um, uh, and so a lot of times pilots are coming up with kind of cre overly creative formats. Um, I've seen some really cool resumes, but we'll save those um, those kind of cool and creative resumes for um, maybe marketing, advertising, graphic design type positions. But it doesn't need to be that creative for a pilot position. We're really looking at, you know, recruiters, hiring managers have resume formats and applications memorized, and we want to look at certain sections of the application and be able to know exactly where we can find your hours, your education, your experience, the titles um, that you've held throughout your career. So we don't want to get too creative. Also, I think some pilots 
get too wordy. You know, when we're only spending 60 seconds on a resume, if even that, um, bullet format is great, um, but it should only be a one page uh, resume. Okay, okay. And um, now that we've heard about some of the, the errors to avoid, can you just walk us through the major components of what an effective pilot resume should look like? Yeah, I provided a sample resume um, if you want to pull that up um, so that it should be really simple and easy to read. Um, and it, there is a very standard pilot resume. Um, it should, we want it to highlight the depth of your experience, including your flying experience, your academic experience, leadership, um, in both a professional setting at work, any leadership that you've got. Uh, had through work, I mean, through school and nonprofit organizations, um, all of your credentials and certificates and ratings, your hours, your education should all be very easy to read. So we'll kind of just start at the top of this resume and go through that. Um, it should be a nice, neat format. It should be aligned um, well. Um, so at the top, you can see my contact information. I think that there's a lot of companies out there that are resume writing. Um, Companies I think that it's um, a little, just a little bit hard to hear. I don't know. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Okay. Um, so some companies um, have conflicting guidance on whether or not to put your address on there. I think it's important to have your address, um, and it's more the city and state that you are in. Um, you know, you're taking these resumes to job fairs. Um, into the interview um, and it's being emailed around. We can't give you, if we only have a resume on for you and we want to invite you to meet with a chief pilot or we are going to be in your city and state doing interviews, it's nice to know where you are. So um, we're not necessarily mailing you anything. Um, so the city and state are really important. Obviously, your phone number and your email address should be, um, and all of that contact information should be at the top, but uh, it should be current and it should be professional. Um, we see some resume, some email addresses that are not really the most professional um, email address. Um, and remember your voicemail as well on your phone number should, uh, should be professional as well. Um, then certificates and ratings should be up at the top. Um, we have a limited amount of real estate on a resume. It's only one, remember, it's only one page. And so we want to clearly put up there what is most impactful should be listed first. You can use, um, you can bold some of the font to bring that eye to the more impactful areas um, of your resume. Um, so you can see that the ATP is up there at the top. And right below that is that type rating. The other things listed, um, the first, like the first class medical, the FCC um, permit is not that impactful. So we're not gonna bold that and we're gonna put those last. Um, and then the flight time should be just under the certificates and ratings. You shouldn't have more than about nine categories for your flight times. Sometimes people will put this into a chart um, uh, to, to make it easy to read, but I think this one's pretty simple. I wouldn't put decimals in the flight times. And again, we list uh, in a resume the most impactful down to the less impactful. So a lot of times we're listing this in the, um, the total time is higher, whatever that total time is. And I'm not talking about your total flight time, but what the, um, the number that's higher. Um, so your total time, obviously that 3120 is pretty impactful. That's a lot of flight time. And so let's put that first. So they see that you've got quite a bit of flight time. And then the turbine time, we've got that listed under there. So the human eye just naturally, or the American, um, we, we read top to bottom, left to right. And um, so we put again, the, the most impactful flight time or in most impactful information, we'll put that in the top left-hand uh, 
portion of that section of the uh, resume. Um, and then after flight time should be your experience. On a resume, we want to put all of your aviation experience. If you have any military, we want to include all military experience as well. It doesn't need to just go back 10 years. I haven't seen um, even like a military pilot who has 23 years in aviation. Um, I have not seen um, the need for any pilot ever to need a two page resume when you're sending that to a 121 airline or even a part 135 a cargo operation i haven't seen anyone's resume justify two pages where the two pages come in is usually for like a part 91 company that doesn't have an application system that's going along with it so in the experience section you you list your experience in from present day to oldest um, going in reverse order. So um, we've got, and you always wanna put the month and year um, on the dates. The format here, the dates can be on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. If you're really having a hard time with space, if you move that date over to the right-hand side of the page, you can write up underneath the date and that will um, give you more kind of real estate or space on your page. So that's another format that you can use. Um, the most impactful positions held at that airline, you want to list that first. So we wouldn't put, um, you know, we want to put captain first on this first uh, position, uh, on the current position. And then if there was, uh, if they had been um, in another position, we would um, like a first officer position, we don't necessarily need to um, to list that here. But if there was another position like an instructor in the training center, then you could either put that as a second entry, separate entry, or you would put instructor second. Um, we've got the aircraft flown, so that's easy to see there. Um, and then when you're doing the job, when you're adding the job duties up under the title, um the position held that can be in either bullet fo format this is a pretty simple career path so um, it was easy for us to do in a paragraph format but if it's uh, a little bit more uh, complicated and more details in here we would want to simplify it um, and do it in a bullet format they you don't have to have complete sentences um, if you're doing a bullet format, I wouldn't put a period at the end, so it would be sentence fragments in each of those uh, bullets. Um, but in this one, you can tell, you can see in here that we put things like designated mountainous airport SIC qualified for uh, Colorado area. Um, this really shows a little bit more depth of experience rather than just uh, assist, uh, you know, responsible for the safe uh, transport of passengers from point A to point B. Uh, and that's a lot of times what we see in a resume is that you, they're not really telling us anything more than what we already know a pilot at say SkyWest. Um, we know that they're responsible for the safe. Oh, I think it's getting a little hard to hear you again. Thanks, Ashley. Um, you know, if you're a, a regional airline pilot, stating the obvious um, doesn't really make an impact and it's wasting real estate. So we want to make um, an impact where we can and use our real estate wisely. And so tell it me something I don't know um, by just reading that you're a captain at SkyWest Airlines. Uh, so, so we want to really highlight the depth of your experience. If you've really had quite a bit of experience with emergency situations, uh, declaring an emergency, uh, medical emergencies. We want to really show that you've been there, done that, seen that. Uh, so um, that's an opportunity in this job description or flight duty or the duties section of the resume to highlight what you've actually done. And you'll go back, there's not, it should should go back 10 years, but um, 
if you've got more experience or like I said, military experience or more aviation experience, it should encompass your entire aviation career. Uh, then next should be your education should always be at the bottom, um, towards the bottom of the resume. Um, the great thing about resumes is that you only highlight the good things about your career and your education and not the bad. So you can see on this one, um, the Associates in Arts and Criminal Justice, um, we didn't put a GPA on that one. Um, we left that off intentionally because um, the GPA wasn't as strong in the Associates program. But um, this person has a really great GPA um, uh, for his bachelor's. Um, and so we, we want to highlight that. And so we put that on there. Um, the achievements, um, you know, really dig deep and think about all of the things that you've been recognized for, um, whether it's through, um, through college or uh, being voted by the scheduling department as pilot of the quarter. Um, but dig deep and see what you have there. Um, and then the community involvement. Some of the airlines really have a, a larger point system on community involvement. And so um, think about those where you've really given back and whether that's in, in college or with Habitat for Humanity. Um, and if you've done it for a significant period of time, put that down there as well. Um, I like to see uh, volunteering and being more involved in aviation because at the end of the day, I'm hiring a pilot who loves to fly, who loves aviation, and um, who, and that's really shows a lot. When we're going through this resume, we're looking through also what's giving them some good talking points in the res in the app in the interview as well. And so I can ask about all kinds of things in here, the mountainous terrain flying and what was challenging there and how you were selected to to um, to be a part of that program, um, the mentoring students in college, um, and you're still involved in that. What you know? Why are you, are you still involved? Well, I'm really passionate about aviation. And I'm passionate about helping these young students um, to to reach the goals that I've been able to. Um, so it gives me it sets me up with some questions to to kind of launch the interview um, with. So. We do have a question. Um, did you, do you need to state the length you've held different positions within a single organization, i.e., captain two years, first officer three years? No, you don't. No, not you don't need that on either the application, either the application, nor on the resume itself. For most, there's there's exceptions to all rules like that, but for the most part, I I don't think that any anyone needs to put the the length when you upgraded. Okay, and then I know a question that um, we see a lot from, we have a, a lot of uh, viewers right now that have tuned in that are on the, the lower end of the experience poll. So can you speak to if someone doesn't perhaps have a whole lot of aviation experience to list what additionally they should list in their um, experience if their, their aviation experience is, is a very limited amount? Yeah, so you'll have to go back and some of this can be um, volunteer experience that you've done. Uh, it might not be a paid position, but things that you did through school. Um, and, you know, we're looking for, just because it's not um, in a pilot position or it's not a leadership title doesn't mean, mean that you didn't have leadership responsibilities. And so really highlight, you know, that you've, you've led groups um, and you can, you can put that even if it's through college, you can expand on that with uh, clubs and organizations that you've been heavily involved in, um, in your resume. Okay. Uh, we have someone that has taken a couple of years off from flying to be home in a, a non-aviation position due to um, just some family situations, should they place their current, a last and current non-aviation position on their resume as they begin to apply to um, part 91, 121, 135 opportunities? 
Yeah, so if you're in a, if you're employed in a, so we've got, you know, you were a pilot or you're an instructor and then you leave and you're taking care of an ill family member and you take a job at Home Depot um, that's not obviously aviation, then um, you would have to put still that employment on your application, on your resume, as well as your application. Uh, but you would need to put that on your application. And we would um, not really expand if, if we're looking for real estate on the uh, resume itself, we would only put one bullet under that position, uh, highlighting just the main responsibilities um, so that we have more room for the aviation positions held. Uh, we don't really want to waste that real estate talking about responsibilities at um, a position like a Home Depot customer service position. Um, we wanna make a strong impact in your aviation career. Uh, so we'll expand those, but collapse the ones that are non-aviation related, but we'll still have to put those in there. Some things, if you have a, a gap in employment that you weren't working at all, we would not put that on the resume itself but we would explain that on the application and then you might even put that, that well, I, know I think it's we'll talk can you hear me okay yeah it was just fading out for a second okay um the uh it might justify a cover letter to explain that gap in employment if it's uh if you're emailing your resume and it's not going with an application it's not attached to an application that's when a cover letter might be uh, justified. Okay, perfect. And um, do quantifiable metrics help, such as pass rates as an instructor? Um, yeah, so that kind of thing you would put in there just simply kind of have how we have the GPA um, listed in parentheses next to the education. Um, or um, you can list that under, on, and when I say that, like, um, let me think of something that would be, be Ross Brown Passion for Aviation Award. You could put in parentheses or just a dash um, with additional information, selected um, one of 500 students. Um, something like that can be down in the achievement section. Um, or it can be in the under the job duties uh, portion of the experience section. Perfect. And I think with that, Jonathan, definitely if you, you know, if you have a really great pass rate, that is something to, um, if you're talking about as an instructor, that's, that's definitely something to showcase. And then um, also what from same Jonathan, uh, what are your thoughts on a professional summary at the top? It, that's, that can be, um, if it's not obvious, um, but if you're just repeating what's already in the re resume, um, it doesn't really add impact. Also for um, like objectives, uh, a lot of pilots will put an objective and the objective is to obtain a first officer position at United Airlines. Well, let's think about that. You where am I reading that resume? In airline apps um, or at your United interview. So it's, that's you're stating the obvious. Uh, so it's a waste of real estate by stating something like that. But if you are going to use an objective, it should be impactful to join the best airline in the industry um, that has a company culture uh, that aligns with my core values. Um, okay, and does the uh, quality of the paper matter since there is specific paper for resumes? No, just regular printer paper is fine today. All of these, um, you know, it's, it's used so uh, for such a short period of time that um, the paper, we don't even remember what paper you had it printed on. And um, it's all going through scanners if we are using it from a res from an interview so that it'll actually be shredded um, after the interview and it will be only obtained, obtained in a, uh, an electronic oh. format okay 
And um, if someone owns a business and it's not aviation related, should they still include it since it shows a leadership capacity? Um, they should, um, it, especially if it is, you know, they're salaried from, from that uh, company um, and it's going to have to be on the application uh, or you would not pass background check because you wouldn't be fully disclosing your education. Now, what is acceptable at a regional airline versus a company like an LLC, I mean, a low cost carrier, an LCC, or a major airline are two different things. Um, so I'm giving you guidance on building your own resume for like a regional airline or a, a, a cargo feeder, but I highly suggest getting it professionally written and applications edited if you're going to a company like JetBlue, Frontier, Alaska, Hawaiian, Spirit, Delta United, American Southwest, FedEx, UPS. Um, so because there's so many details that are really important when you're going to one of those companies. But um, you're uh, being self-employed, you should disclose that on your uh, application and your resume. We wouldn't expand the, um, the, the job duties on that um, unless it's aviation related. Um, you know, we're hiring you to fly 80 hours a month and be passionate about a career as a pilot, not to see if you can be an entrepreneur and sell real estate. And so we wanna see that you're passionate about the position that we're hiring you for. And I think we've gone over a lot of that, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen, guys. All right. And so, um, aside from the obvious being the flight times, what changes do you recommend that a pilot makes as they, they gain that additional experience? Yeah, so if your application is in um, with you know, through like airline apps or pilot credentials, you should be updating your application about once every two weeks, but then um, update your resume once a month. So update those flight times um, once a month. If you have new certificates and ratings, um, you should update your uh, resume immediately. Anytime that you're rolling over a significant hour milestone, go ahead and update that again because they're running reports out of these application systems. So if you're uh, just rolling, oh, you just updated your resume and application, but you're, um, next week you're rolling over to 1,000 hours of term and PIC, you should go ahead and update immediately when you um, meet that milestone. Uh, anytime that your position changes, like you upgrade to captain or you become a check airman or you have a new position, you should update that immediately and always before you go to a job fair or you come to the interview just days before you go you should update everything your application your resume um, so that it's the latest um, in the system okay perfect and then um, as far as you had mentioned, the, the screening that's done through airline apps with some of the major LLCs, legacy carriers utilizing um, technology to pre-screen applicants, can you talk a little bit more about this technology and how it's used and um, how this pre, in, in this pre-interview phase, a, a resume really, what makes it stand out? Yeah, so... Um... The com you know, companies that are like Part 91 companies and some of the smaller cargo companies, they will have resume screening software uh, systems. But most of these companies, all of the major airlines, all of the LCCs, they have built either their own um, pilot application system or they are utilizing um, a software system like airline apps or pilot credentials. And so the scannable resumes are not necessary for a pilot position uh, for the most part. Um, they have pre-screening questions that are built into their software. Um, and then the, the new application system that they've built is what's really 
actively screening you for an interview uh, or for the first phase. So in airline apps, pilot credentials, and the in-house build systems, they run reports um, to narrow down uh, the number of pilots that they're considering for an interview to a manageable amount. And then once they've narrowed it down from 5,000 pilots that are in their application system to say 600, at that point, then there's a human being who goes through and grades, uh, hand grades each application. And um, when, uh, when necessary, necessary, especially in for like American and Southwest, FedEx, uh, UPS, Alaska, the they require a resume uh, because the application system doesn't provide them with all the information and so they are hand grading your resume and your application to make that final decision on whether or not to uh, invite you to an interview and some things that i've seen that sets people apart at that that point um, is you know when we can see their personality or their passion for aviation and that resume that we just had up on the screen, you know, we could tell that they were um, passionate about giving back. They excelled and were selected for a Passion for Aviation Award. Um, they went above and beyond in college um, and um, truly knew what they wanted to do. Uh, had a had a direct path uh, that they that they stayed on throughout their career. So there's no doubt in my mind that that person. One wants to be a pilot and the direction that that pilot is going. Um, and so that, those types of things, um, uh, I think, uh, sets them apart a bit. Um, and that, yeah. then since you have not only helped out with um, establishing some of these hiring processes, but you've also sat um, in the capacity of, of the hiring portion and the interview portion, what uh, additionally can someone do during the, the physical interview um, that really makes them stand out as far as a resume? Yeah, so for, you know, they should have, um, so on the resume itself, you know, like I said before, it is really giving us talking points um, in the interview. So we do have a set of questions that we can go off of in an interview. Um, we have, certain dimensions that we're evaluating in an interview but before we even come and get you out of the lobby for the interview um, the first impression that we have is your resume possibly a cover letter and the application and so that's our first um, impression of you um, making sure that it's professionally written that it does show passion for aviation and so i either have a good um, impression or one that I'm really skeptical about. And it's gonna help me to start setting up my questions. Um, and so take notes and start, um, some of those questions are gonna be, uh, maybe take on a negative tone if we have concerns, um, or it may take on a really positive tone, seeing like, like I said, their passion for aviation or the ability to go above and beyond, or it's already highlighted the depth of your experience. So I can really dive in there and see what some of those challenges have been in, when uh, you know, flying through a mountainous terrain. Um, what are some of those challenges uh, that you've faced uh, when learning um, through uh, being a captain or a mentor? What are the things that the, the differences that you feel like you've been able to make? that experience so we'll set up our questions based off of what um, is in the resume itself so you're writing the resume don't just think about getting the interview but think about what's the impact in the interview itself okay Perfect. and uh, you had mentioned a cover letter so is that something that if there is an option that you always recommend um, submitting or are there certain situations where you would withhold that Definitely, and I think that it, the cover letter and the resume both, um, you have to think about who's reading this and where are they reading it, and then you would tailor it for each environment. So if you're emailing your resume to a friend who's gonna send it on to their chief pilot, that's one perspective. 
if you're taking it to a job fair and you're um, going to be standing with a recruiter who's reviewing it for 10, 20 seconds um, while they're talking to you, that's a different perspective. Um, and so cover letters, I feel like anytime that you're emailing your resume, a cover letter should go along with it and should explain, um, really tell about a little bit about you, why you got interested in aviation, um, why you're interested in the company that you're, um, that you're pursuing. Um, and it really should highlight some of the great opportunities that you've been able to have in your career. Um, and it should be written in just very plain uh, conversational English, um, not to uh, just so that it shows, so they feel a little bit that they got to know you, that they got to meet you almost through that cover letter. Um, it should always be saved as a PDF along with your resume, so they can't separate that cover letter out from your resume. Um, I think that cover letters are great for job fairs. They're not going to read the cover letter when you're right there in front of them, but they will keep it and they may refer back to it or when you walk away and they've got some downtime in the booth, they may read through that cover letter as well. A cover letter should, the header on the cover letter should match the cover letter, the header on your resume as well. So if we look back over, it should kind of be like a, um, a letterhead. If we look back over at that resume, we had the contact information at the top with a line separating uh, the contact information from the body of the resume. Use that same uh, uh, header on your uh, cover letter as well. And then any time that you have special circumstances that, um, that you're going, it could be when you're going to an interview or um, that you would need to include a cover letter, um, that really there's no room on the application to explain why you took um, uh, a different pathway in your career, why you left aviation to take care of that sick family member. There's no real great place to include that. A cover letter can, can help there. Um, I have a pilot just recently who's done a master's program and her uh, project that she's worked on is really impressive. It's aviation related and um, she's really proud of it. Well, we can't put the project in there with her resume, but we can mention it um, in the cover letter. Okay, and following up on that, it looks like we did have a message in our chat. Um, how do pilot communities or pilot clubs factor in on a resume on a cover letter since it hits three separate points, the, the passion for aviation, the community involvement, and potentially uh, leadership opportunities? A lot of times that can fall under the volunteer on, or community involvement section. Um, and you can, because a lot of times you're volunteering with that group. Um, memberships, um, uh, they're on the, most of the applications will um, ask for memberships that you're involved with. Um, you can put another section in here. These are just some examples of achievements. Um, if you have some type of special training or schools that you've gone to, um, you can put that at the bottom as well. But achievements and community involvement are just some examples of what we have listed there. Um, you can you can definitely put change that up slightly. And then um, should the cover letter include a photo? No, I don't think that's necessary. I think it becomes a little bit of a distraction. Um, don't get too creative um, on that. Okay. And how many paragraphs should a cover letter be? About three paragraphs. Intro, uh, it should be one page. Uh, it should not be a long, um, uh, a, a long um, cover letter. I should be able to read it in a minute. Um, and again, just very conversational tone. Um, and then the font on your cover letter um, and your resume should be anywhere between a 10 point and a 12 point font. You can do, if needed, um, you can do, we'll, we'll usually see this on a really detailed military resume that you can do maybe 11 point font and narrow margins, um, but you can change up the, the margins um, 
I look at the, I also always suggest that you look at your resume in a print form, a printed format, so you can see um, your alignment. Does it look nice, neat, and professional? Um, and the only way that you can see that is by printing it out. I feel like um, is there a bunch of white space that's out of balance? Um, but you want it to be uh, professional looking um, as far as just the format and the alignment. Okay. And if you have a separate mailing address, should you highlight that as your address or a physical address in lieu of PO box? You can put that on there as well. Um, or you can just put your mailing address. You don't have to have your physical address. Um, if it was, if you live in the same town as your PO box, then I would just put your PO box on there. Okay. And um, when in the cover letter, should you, how would you create a signature at the end? Or do you, um, would that be something that you would want to have printed and, you know, pen to paper or is the digital signature okay? A digital signature is just fine. You don't even have to have a signature in today's um, world. Um, same thing for letters of recommendation. As long as their contact information is on there, you don't have to have an actual wet signature um, on any of your uh, uh, cover letters or letters of recommendation. Okay. Um, should certificates or ratings, so I guess if you're signing your cover letter or uh, your name on it, are you wanting to list your legal name or if you go by something else, should they be listed? And Justin, let me know if this is not what you're intending to ask. Um, should certificates or rated ratings be listed under the same name that's on the application? So your legal name should be on there, um, definitely, because we're going back and forth between a resume and then going and looking up your name in the application system. So we need the legal name on there. But um, if my um, if I went by my middle name, which is Lynn, then I would put Rebecca and in quotations, Lynn Crone, um, and that would signify you know. So then when they call me, they could say Lynn um, versus Rebecca. Okay. Perfect. And um, so we have gone over a lot of information. If you had one piece of advice to share with our viewers, either resume related or, or aviation in general, uh, what would that be? Well, I know you asked for just one, but I'm going to give you three. Okay. Um, so I think that most importantly is to keep your nose clean professionally. And that is a really big bullet um, to, you know, that's from approaching training um you know well prepared um it's really hard to overcome 121 training failures it doesn't mean that you can't you know i see people all the time get hired but it does set back their timeline so make sure that you're prepared for training uh, that you build strong relationships within each phase of uh, your career you know the people the students that you are teaching um, are going to co go on to different careers, and some of them will move faster through their career than you're moving. Um, and they're the ones who may be um, recommending you at, to United Airlines when you're coming in to interview. Um, same thing with the first officers and captains that you're flying with. Some of them may be hired faster than you are, and so those are your letters of recommendation. So um, keep your nose clean professionally, but also, you know, I see a lot of pilots with um, DUIs um, with different kinds of uh, offenses on their um, on their record and and again that just changes your timeline up a little bit um, so uh, then I would also make sure that you narrow down and define what's your long-term career goals you guys there's I, I know that maybe not in this scenario of where today's environment truly a pilot shortage. It's real. Um, it is going to affect the major airlines in a great way. Um, and so um, you should not just take any position that you're offered. It really needs to be aligned with your long-term career goals. 
And so figure out where do you want to end your career? Where do you want to be flying when you're 65 years old? A lot of times that's probably Delta United, American Southwest, FedEx, or UPS is what most, most pilots are targeting. Narrow that down to just three. And uh, then your, your goals will, should align with those airlines. So if you're going, if, if United, American, and Delta are your top three choices, going to a cargo operation long-term to get to those airlines is not necessarily aligned with your long-term goals. In some environments, it's you need to get more flight time, and so that might be a, a little bit of a, um, a detour um, that's necessary. But um, if you are keeping your long-term goal in mind, it'll help you to make the decisions along the way. And then lastly, I would seek the, the guidance from an experienced professional, um, not just from another pilot who's been through the process. There's a whole lot of information online. These online forums, um, uh, pilots love to give other pilots advice and guidance, but it's not always trusted and well-founded guidance. So um, you can't trust the information that you read on the internet. Um, and, and through the pr professional um, guidance, you're going to see that your paperwork has to be perfect when you're going to a major airline interview. It should be perfect. You don't have to be a perfect pilot, but um, and they'll bring some, take some of the pressure off of you of trying to be perfect in the interview. Um, we at Career Takeoff offer a well-defined curricula and process to teach you in detail about each airline's hiring process. Each airline has a different hiring process, so don't approach it blindly, and it's always better to be prepared than um, wish that you had been prepared after the fact. So many times I have pilots um, say, I submitted my application to United or Delta or whatever major airline, and I really didn't think I was going to get called to an inter to interview. What do I do now? Well, it's too late to edit your application at that point. They've already taken a screenshot of it. So make sure that you are prepared for each step of the process before uh, uh, you submit or before you go into that next step. Perfect. And so guys, if you do have, um, we're getting close to the end, so we're gonna take one last question, but if you have more questions or um, would like to potentially um, utilize some of the prep services that Rebecca and Career Takeoff offer, I have shared the screen right now with um, their website. And if you do have questions, there's also this option in addition to all of the services at the top, um, the option to get started. And then from there, you can go to chat with us. Um, and we'll take our last question right now. That is from Evan. When applying to CFI and first officer jobs, um, is it appropriate to have a letter of recommendation from a former instructor from the time when you were a student yourself? Definitely. I think that um, you know, letters of recommendation, you can put in there five, about five to seven letters of recommendation with your application packet. And so, start building those, uh, start collecting letters of recommendations at this, start collecting those now. Uh, just when you go into the interview, know that you might be interviewing two years from now and you'll wanna make sure that it's an updated uh, letter of recommendation. So if you can just get permission from the writer to update the date that it was written. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be when signed. Um, just make sure that it looks fresh. You, you shouldn't be bringing letters of recommendation that were from written two years ago to an interview. Um, it could have been that you worked with them two years ago and they highly recommend you, but it was written within the past six months. Perfect. Awesome. So um, guys, again, if you have any more questions for Rebecca um, and the Career Takeoff team. Here's, here's their website, careertakeoff.com. Um, for those of you guys that are an alumni of ATP, you've successfully completed the Airline Career Pilot Program um, with us. If you haven't heard, you have this resource, atpalumni.org. And when you log in there, um, you will be able to also view some exclusive um, benefits from Career Takeoff um, on that portal, as well as discounts on products, goods, services related to the aviation industry, um, upcoming events, things like that. So um, if you haven't yet registered there, and again, that is another resource that can view some more information um, from Career Takeoff. And this 
just want to say thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us this week and for all of the information that you've um, shared with everyone. And thank you for all of our viewers. Um, next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we'll be talking about facing industry changes. Um, but Rebecca, thank you so much for um, tuning in with us today and sharing your expertise. Thank you so much for having me. I wish you guys the best of luck through your your pilot career. It's a great uh, industry and it's going to present a lot of um, opportunities in the years to come. So hang in there and wish you the best. Thank you and ha everyone have a, a wonderful week. Uh, fly safe and we'll see you next Friday at 2 p.m. for Facing Industry Changes. Have a great weekend.